Science is about understanding the universe that we live in. This requires small, incremental work that slowly changes our understanding. But it also requires large, fundamental leaps that come from the people thinking in drastically different ways from their predecessors, which we call disruptive research. That is, disruptive in a good way. But what if the current environment for scientific research is fundamentally restricting the possibility of these leaps in knowledge? Well, recent research suggests that this is indeed the case. So why is disruptive research decreasing? How much has it gone down? And can we do anything to combat this? Let's discuss it. To begin with, what is disruptive research? We can think of all science as the discovery of knowledge, and the question of whether research is disruptive or not comes down to what type of knowledge is gained. Disruptive research contains knowledge that supersedes our previous understanding, such that it renders the previous research obsolete, pushing science in a new direction. An example is Nobel Prize winning research that introduced the model structure of DNA by Watson and Crick in 1953, or more recently the discovery of graphene in 2007, which also won a Nobel Prize. The opposite of disruptive research is consolidating research, which builds on previous knowledge to extend our understanding. And this is also important, necessary, and extremely valuable. For example, the work by Conn and Sham in 1965 used existing theorems to develop a method for calculating the structure of electrons. This work also won a Nobel Prize for its importance. So it is not that disruptive research is better than consolidating research. It is that we need both to have a healthy system of scientific discovery. But how can we test the disruptiveness of research? There could be many different ways that we could measure this. In this latest metadata analysis that was published in Nature, they suggest performing an analysis of the global citation graph to define how disruptive research is. They define an index called the CD index that quantifies how disruptive or consolidating the research is. The CD index for a single piece of research looks at how the research is cited compared to the previous research. If a paper cites the research, but also cites previous research, then this counts as a point towards it being consolidating. Whereas if a paper only cites the new research, then this points towards it being disruptive. The sum of the value of all the papers that cite the research divided by the number of papers gives an index between one for maximally disruptive to minus one for maximally consolidating ultimately giving each paper a single value to noting how disruptive it was. So what did the scientist find? With this metric in hand, the scientist looked at millions of publications and patterns from 1945 to 2010. They found one simple result. The disruptiveness of science is decreasing over time. While there are differences between scientific fields, the general trend is consistent across all science. And this isn't just that there are a lot more papers, and research in high impact journals is where the more disruptive work is being published. Because major journals like Nature, Science, and PNAS have seen the same decrease over time. Well, if this is not the case, what are some of the potential causes of this decrease? One option is that there is an increasing knowledge burden to get into a field. As we learn more, the next generation of scientists has so much more to learn to catch up. And this time spent learning all these additional concepts is time taking away from performing research, meaning that science is just getting harder over time. If this is true, what we could expect is a narrowing of the understanding of a field. Rather than spending time to read all the additional research, scientists just do research anyway and potentially neglect large swaths of research. Interestingly, the metadata analysis actually supports this. By looking at the citation practice of science, which has actually shifted to citing older papers on average over time. Another option 
is the current environment of science is just no longer conducive to disruptive research anymore. Disruptive research requires risk. You need to dedicate time to perform research that might not return anything. This can mean a PhD that spends their entire PhD working on a project that gives nothing, potentially ending the possibility of this student staying in science, and even potentially leading to the end of their supervisor's career as well, because they can't get the next grant that they need to keep their job. So how might we mitigate these issues? We need to start to let scientists be scientists, without the constant risk of losing their job. Many of these issues could be circumvented if we had better pathways to being a scientist and have more stable positions. We can start to try and value the quality of research rather than the quantity of research and realize that this requires more time. So short-term contracts just don't really make sense in science. In the end, people fear that their career will end if they take a risk on a more exciting research project and that it doesn't work out. As a consequence, they're far less likely to take the risk to begin with. There are many issues in science that we need to address. Check out this video to learn about how even if we do fund science, we waste most of the money anyway. And check out this video to learn about how we undervalue PhD students so much that they can be living below the poverty line.